Hey coaches and teachers in the golf industry, Martin Chuck here. I'm in my home studio and I want to introduce you to a cool product that I'm working with called Hack Motion Golf. And what you can see here in Hack Motion, you see the avatar on the right part of the screen right there representing my wrist conditions and my lead wrist. Ulnar deviation, radial deviation, extension, and flexion. And what's really cool about this device is you can watch what's happening in 3D time, real time, when you review the swings. And what I will do is I will actually use Hack Motion in conjunction with video so that my students can see what's happening in transition with their golf swing. Whether or not in transition something's happening that's going to affect the face and how they have to respond to the face, or do they have elements in their swing that are going to produce a lot of reliability as they unwind themselves to collect a golf ball at the bottom of their swing. So let's walk through a couple of these things in hack motion. Introducing this great product, there's a team in Latvia. Uh, Janice and his team from Latvia reached out to me to show me this product a number of months ago. And I'm happy to say that uh, Tour Striker, my wife and I, we are going to be the distributors in North America for hack motion. And I think it's a, it's a revolutionary coaching device. And I know there's others in the market that, that do a similar, that are similar to this. But for user interface simplicity and price, I think this is unmatched. So let's dig in a little bit. I know as a coach you'll be interested in this because it's understanding your risk conditions and how it relates to the face and the, the weight of the golf club in transition and the stresses it puts on the body. Once we can communicate that to our students and they understand these things, they play way better golf. So let me take you on a little tour of how hack motion works. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Hack motion simply goes on, Velcro put it in place on the forearm. Next piece either can go on a clip which adheres nicely to the Velcro on your glove or if you don't wear a glove it comes with a nice strap that's very comfortable. So once you get that secured in place you are ready to go. So it begins with a calibration. You hit the calibration button and here's the first pose to calibrate second pose to calibrate, you are good to go. Now we're going to go and start a session. Now when you start a session you can see if we look here that you can see all the motions in my wrist condition. So let's go ahead and get to, and then I can change this around as well. I can change the top position, back position, the different views of my hand where I'd be going in my golf swing. So let's get started. So coaches you saw how easy it was to calibrate the device. Simply holding your arm comfortably flat is one calibration and then going into an extension is the other calibration. And then where you, where you orient the device when you calibrate it will give you its front view. So if you like to see it in this condition like you'd be looking at a golfer face on, you can see in the right screen, you know, typically a good player will have the condition of, a, of an extended lead wrist at address and the weight of the club is going to stress that wrist into a flatter condition. Now for many, many years, and I know I'm guilty of this as a, as a student of the golf machine many years ago, you know, we felt like we held something in, in place. Well, as golf, and my, my first court coach, George Newton, was smart enough to tell me that that wasn't the case, but we always want to believe certain things. Well, the dynamics of wrist conditions, the wrists are really moving quite a bit during the golf swing from an extended position, in some cases into a boat condition, back through extension, ulnar deviation, radial, radial deviation. Well, with a lot of students, in a couple of swings, you can start off with showing them how their grip works. A high-level player is going to have a bit more extension between their forearm and the back of their left hand. And here is something that's going into radial deviation as I go to the zero number up there underneath the top one, which is flexion. So I'm flexed and basically have no deviation. Now as I go into ulnar deviation, I'm going negative. And so a good player is going to have this combination of extension in the grip and ulnar deviation. And then during their backswing, things are going to go, if you're a coach that talks in the P system at P2, you can see how rapidly those things change. And somewhere in transition, instead of extension, if you look in that top number uh, on the right side of the screen, you'll see how that's gone negative. Where it started really extended, it's now gone into a, a very flexed condition and my deviation has gone very ulnar as I start to work my way into impact. The, go the golf ball gets collected and the club overtakes. Now, 
That's a tricky thing to explain to a student, but I can be honest with you, you know, the first person I demoed with was my wife. And as, she, as soon as she was able to see her before swings and start to correspond the numbers to the fields, she was able to make a change pretty quickly. And rather than going into the condition at the top that we see so many of our amateurs going to, which is very radial and very extended, she was able to get into a much more reliable position where she could feel like, okay, that's what you do. Okay, yeah, that's basically what I do, dear. And then from there, she could learn how to unwind that, which gave her more predictable application of the ball, the club to the ball, and she started hitting better shots that day. So it's an amazing learning device, understanding these conditions. Now, every time you hit a shot, I'll hit one more, and we'll, look, we'll go through the numbers together a little bit here. So address, hit a shot. You don't even know you have it on. That's the beautiful thing about it. And in this, we go from a dress position of having extension of, th of uh, 30 degrees to the top of still having some extension. And then you can see the difference. I go from an extreme extension at a dress, you know, almost to flat, not quite to bowed. And I don't know that too many people actually get to bowed. But the reality is there's a lot of dynamics happening here. As far as radial deviation, you could see at a dress, I'm ulnar deviated. At the top, I basically go back to neutral. I never really get radial deviated. And then at impact, I get a little bit more ulnar, meaning that the handle raised just a sliver. So these are things that you can train. And naturally down here, it has duration of timing. Let's go take a close look at the slide bar right here so you can show people where this stuff happens during the swing so they can be a little bit more aware of how you're going to train them to understand these conditions so they can be more reliable. Right now I'm in the live view, so whatever I do with my wrist condition, you're going to see that on the screen. You've got options here. You can go to the chart. We can let this populate, and we can look at when at address, how things move during the swing. I can go through into replay mode and drag this, th drag this in live time and change the view if I want to. I can look from the top down, and we can look at the wrist condition. Here's an interesting one. From from the back position, so at the top of my swing. This is interesting. When you look at a higher handicap golfer, you're not going to see that this is, represents the elbow joint, by the way, and obviously the wrist joint and the fingers. You're going to see something that doesn't travel downward. You're going to see something that travels more outward, a pretty common situation where the hand gets more vertical right away rather than travels on a reasonable pitch back to the golf ball. And as I'm working in transition, my wrist condition is actually getting flatter. As you can see, the numbers get slightly into the negative. So my wrist condition is getting pulled into a negative condition of flexion. And then I'm starting to go back into radial, or I'm sorry, ulnar deviation down. Into, and I know that can be mildly confusing, talking about extension, flexion, radial, uh, radial deviation, and ulnar deviation. But this behavior is something that happens with good players. And if you don't have a way to express that to students, it's pretty tricky. Naturally, it will. you can have the, a table view. We can look at the last couple swings. Whatever one you click on populates it over here. You can go into a 3D mode if you want to look at specific parts and change the pitch in the view. You're, you can do that pretty easy. And as a golfer, if you want to take them through the journey of the swing, you know, when they actually stress, when the weight of the club and how that weight of the club stresses the wrist conditions, you know, if you get a high, a high handicap golfer, in this condition, you're going to see rather than something going into the negative, okay, you're going to see something getting a lot more extended, a lot more radial deviated. And in that condition, that's when they don't have any moment, they don't have time of the ball, and they have to jump up out of the way, and they have to fit something in, and that's where the reliability tanks. So in a short session with hack motion, you can really isolate some critical things and, and give them the feels they need in order to in order to have an awareness of what their wrist conditions are doing as they transition into a golf ball rather than you know get too extended and radial deviated. So coaches and teachers, Martin Chuck introducing hack motion. You know, I hope you enjoy that little demonstration. You can see just how much information you can glean and how simple the user interface is for you to use 
and for the student to understand. That's the most important thing. You can, you can keep their information, you can have a session, you can save the session, and it's easy for you to track day in, day out, or every week or two or months or years when you see your student to see how they've evolved with their understanding of how they manage the weight of, weight of the golf club in your training as their body delivers that golf club to the golf ball. So Martin Chuck signing off. I'm really excited about this new product that we are going to be distributing in the United States and in Canada from Hack Motion. Once you train your students to understand these small variables, you're really going to look like a great coach because they're going to play some great golf.